Uh, I mean, who doesn't want to be screamed at first thing in the morning uh, at the beginning of the week? I think that's kind of like normal for that. That's Americana, right? Go to work, yeah. get yelled at by your boss and uh, and do nothing for the next uh, till lunch, basically. All right. Welcome to Bid Nerds, everybody. JP, we have the best bumper in the in the, bro- in the podcast business. That's that sure. is uh, for sure. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is a Monday edition of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids, Bring a Trailer, P-Car Market, Rad for Sale, maybe Hemmings. I mean, there are yep. so many new auction sites coming up. You know, it, it, it used to take me two seconds to do the opening of the show. Now we got to list like 50 different auctions. <laughs> we need to just say the most interesting cars of the day on all the um i don't know popular automotive enthusiast auction sites is kind of our shtick uh yep. so welcome uh you've been probably waiting all weekend you've been dying not having nerds <laughs> uh so it's time to nerd out my name is john polnick i'm coming to you live from the las vegas strip in las vegas nevada and michael d my partner over there is coming to you from San Francisco Bay, Michael Deeb, you had yourself quite the automotive weekend. Oh this weekend. man, it was so awesome, dude! We did the uh, Breakfast Club rally. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's normally a beginning of the month thing, but the Super Bowl got in the way. And then last weekend, we had this thing called weather, and mm-hmm. uh, these guys got a little bit nervous that they were sending people uh, over some, you know, reasonable passes that might have some ice and snow last weekend. So they postponed it this weekend. The weather was spectacular. 200 plus cars. Uh, Santa Rosa to Calistoga by way of Middletown. So it's like going from here to here by way of here, you know, like that kind of thing. And so, and it's all in these, um, the coastal ranges with great, great New York to Florida via Portland, Oregon. Exactly. That route. Yeah. It was fantastic. Anyway, really, really fun. Uh, Esther and I had a blast. I got to see our friends, uh, you know, Yuri and Mike Rosi and uh, Bent Knowles and some other friends and we just we had a great great time man and the cars are outstanding it's any JP, of the it's, any of the dwa guys coming out on that scene is I, that the, I would, uh, have they crossed I over would, yet i would think so I, I i because look we're all in the bay area um so i think that's that's a that's a real thing i i don't yeah. know the dwa i've been introduced to them but i don't know them that i could recognize them across the parking lot but i think all the guys in norcal are showing up for this because the numbers are incredible and uh jp do you remember when we did um we went to Radwood at the Peterson Museum, and uh, the gentleman from the Peterson brought his five-liter Mustang CHP <laughs> car. Yeah. So some other gentleman has an exact, like the exact same thing. It's either a retired CHP car, or he took mm. a five-liter Mustang notchback and made it one. Mm. And so that, and it was spectacular. And the car was on the rally. It was just, dude, it was so much fun. We we really had a good time. That so, sounds anyway. fantastic. Uh, wish yep. we wish I had made a road trip out. You know, let me know the next one, and uh, we'll be there. Yep. Unless it's this weekend, because uh, yep. if you're coming to Las Vegas this weekend, stick around till Sunday morning. Uh, we do the last Sunday of every month, uh, which happens to be this sunday cars und cafe um, that is kind of like a little micro lufta cult in front of a place called the good wolf lifestyle <laughs> co um and it's just a great chill uh for the last sunday of the month in las vegas um, yeah baby luft yeah. baby luft uh so <laughs> looking forward to that this weekend but uh you know so if you're hanging out on this channel you're going all right guys shut up get to the cars what do we do on this channel we we yeah. nerd out when we say we nerd out what we mean is that we we, we pick a bunch of weird cars from cars and bids and bring a trailer and all these sites. And you know, the cars that the cars that we have stories about and the cars that we think we know something about. And a lot of times cars that we don't know anything about, which is pretty much yes. all cars because we don't know anything about anything. Um, but we just nerd out about these cars and we make predictions as to what we think they will sell for when the hammer drops at the end of their individual auctions. And we don't just willy nilly throw these numbers out and forget about them because we know no one watches the show. Um, <laughs> We keep track of these things. And uh, yep. so the day, a day later, we go over those numbers. And usually I'm way better at it than Michael D. But holy cow, did he have one solid Friday? He got Not what that. we call a Yahtzee and actually uh, predicted one on the money. He predicted yeah. the exact dollar amount. I missed one by like 250 bucks. Um, yep. But um, let's nope, talk nope. about our predictions from <laughs> last week, Michael D. How did we do? Yeah. Or last Friday. This- this is combat, JP. There's no points for second yeah, place. Yeah. <laughs> we have to show that one that you did, your uh, your trailer for, uh, um, what was it, Star Wars and uh, Oh, the Star Wars Top and uh, Top Gun Top, trailer. Top Gun yeah, mashup. the mashup. Yeah, yeah. No points for second place, JP. Yeah. <laughs> um, our star car of the week was the BMW 325 Xi, was it not? That car out of New York. Why not? The E30. 
D30? I think it was. Anyway. I've got it queued um, up, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, good. Great little car out of New York. But uh, while you and I both kind of love the model, it would not be our first choice if we were shopping for an E30 platform because the all-wheel drive system was not the best in period. It was, however, BMW's first foray into all-wheel drive in the U.S. market at least. Uh, and so this was an interesting car with an interesting history. This one seems to be all original because it looks relatively worn out. The seats in particular, the, the, the wear and tear on the interior of this car is pretty rough. And there's a little bit of corrosion underneath. So with all that being said, two, I think it was like 250,000 or 170,000 miles on this particular car. But it seemed to be relatively used up. I said ten grand. You said nine. This car sold for ten thousand five hundred dollars. So congratulations to the seller and the buyer. Uh, onward and upward. Um, we jumped over to cars and bids, and we looked at an alternative for your money: um, a BMW X3 from 2007 with a manual transmission. So here's a car with one of BMW's latest version of all-wheel drive. Uh, this car did have like 150,000 miles, but looked almost brand new. Uh, triple black looks great on this car the sticks are extremely rare in these small suv platforms and so we thought this was a neat car to juxtapose against bmw's first fourier into manual transmissions and all-wheel drive so i said eight and you said nine and this car sold for eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars meaning you missed a yahtzee by just 50 bucks that's crazy <laughs> oh, wow man yeah. anyway uh imagine that jp you could have saved uh ten thousand five uh, thousand five hundred fifty dollars and got the x3 um which is an interesting way to look at how to spend your money in the, yeah. live in the snow so uh anyway we then moved on to three continuous uh, sort of vintage cars. It's just the way it kind of panned out. These were the most interesting cars on Friday. My favorite was the 1958, excuse me, Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint. Mm. Uh, this guy kind of turned it into his own version of a Loci. He took the 1300cc motor out of it and dropped a two liter. Probably makes about 140 horsepower and probably weighs 1900 pounds. So this car actually goes. Uh, full roll cage. Um, it just neat touches with the wheels and the decals and the roll bar and the harnesses and all this sort of thing. I wasn't a fan of the seats, but in any case, I thought this car might bring close to 60,000, but I just didn't think it would break it with the, you know, off interior, the Veloce uh, emblems when it's not a Veloce. Um, you bet the under because I was a little sort of bearish on this one. So you said 55. This car sold for a whopping $69,000, which is all the money in the world for a uh, uh, normally. So congratulations. You played me. To, you played me. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to the seller. Uh, he did really well in this car and congratulations to the buyer because you just don't see these cars out there. I still think a 69,000 bucks JP a guy buys this car and drives the snot out of it, which, yeah. uh, which you only could maybe say that about like somebody that's buying a 356. It did really going to go out and drive it. So this yeah. car, you could ring it out. This is a, a Every rally you can think of, this is the perfect car for it. Nice. So I won that one. Uh, we looked at a really interesting uh, 67 Triumph TR4A with the Surrey top. The Surrey top, meaning that uh, when the target top's in place, it's a coupe. When the target's out, the Surrey top is a fixed glass rear window um, that can also be removed. So when it's in place, it's a Surrey top. When you remove it, then it's a full Roadster convertible. Um, this is still a little four-banger. And um, this one has independent rear suspension, which was an option on six in the 67s um neat little car jp i thought it might bring 28 you thought it might bring 30 and it brought thirty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, meaning you were 250 dollars off a of yahtzee wow it was 250 dollars off of yahtzee on this one and 50 bucks on another one no what, what it what it means is you were 300 dollars off two yahtzees to run the <laughs> So JP, it. JP, you got you got two wins, but very nearly had two Yahtzees, which would have been interesting. Mm. Um, and then the last car of the day is a car you and I both really like, uh, the Volvo, the '65 Volvo P eighteen hundred S. In the video, JP, we can see is owned by like a little old man that that is alleged to have owned the car for like twenty eight years. Uh, this car is just great, even in white with the black interior. The gauges and the seats and the steering wheel. I just think this is a really neat car. Uh, they are twin cam motors. You could put two carbs on these and kind of hot them up a little bit. And these become 
decent rally cars. Uh, not something you would drive as aggressively as the Alpha, uh, despite being younger, but really good looking car. I, I just, I'm a fan of this vehicle. I, I need to drive one and see if it's all that. Uh, but I said 52,000, you said 50. JP, let me show you how it's done. It sold for $52,000, and that's a Yahtzee. Bam. Boom! He's so excited when he gets a Yahtzee. Yeah, I know. It's my second one ever. So, uh, <laughs> And you've got like a dozen of them. You're just giving them away. You give Yahtzees out like they're Christmas gifts. Anyways, I had three wins and a Yahtzee, which drew me closer to your dominant week. JP, you had 12. I had 11. Uh, we did have mm. one draw earlier in the week on the – let me see if I can find it and just talk about that for half a second. It was on the – Oh, the uh, Volkswagen GTI that was on Cars and Bids on Wednesday. Mm. And then uh, I had one Yahtzee this week, and that was it. So uh, all in all, pretty even week, um, but really good As stuff. As per there usual, you know. yeah. That's usually how it works. One of us will have just a stellar day throughout the week, and then uh, by the time we get to the end, it, it just it, we bring it up, and uh, it just yeah. kind of averages out. But um, all right. Well, those were some pretty interesting cars. I, I mean, that... Look, Friday had some really, really pretty cars. I mean, I feel like yeah. Friday was like we, we saved like these amazing kind of uh, uh, classics for the end with the exception of that one X3, which is whatever. OK, the X3 yeah. was still an interesting car because of the very manual interesting on the car. X3. Yeah. yeah. Um, that said, it's time to get to the cars today. Now, before we do that, we just want to let everyone know that uh, we uh, are planning on bringing some guests this week. We do have third nerds uh, right on. getting scheduled. Uh, we don't have them locked in yet, but uh, Brian from Driving While Awesome, DWA, and Rad for Sale will be joining us this week, um, yep. as well as we're hoping to get uh, Kelly Smith from Haggerty Insurance. Uh, he's All big right. wig over there, super good guy and a personal friend of mine, and unbelievable Kelly, Porsche collection. Kelly owns one of my favorite Porsches. He yeah. has a 993 in Riviera blue with the uh, RS wheels. I, I just yeah. think that is, that is one of the sexiest cars I've ever seen. I Everyone love that loves that car. Oh Everyone God, that sees that, that car is, is like, that's my favorite car of all time. It's like crazy. Riviera blue yeah. on a 993. Does it get any better than that? If you oh. ever want to feel like crap, just like I have the same car, but it, it you know, it's the, it's the worst, it's the worst <laughs> version of that same exact car. We were both 95, <laughs> so 993s, but I have so a silver true. cab and it's, you know, busted <laughs> and people are like, no, oh, whatever. That's my favorite car in the world. It's like they're the same car. What are you talking about? And then people are like, oh, that car is terrible. It's awful. Awful. Anyways, yeah, uh, we're I, looking I love, forward to seeing those guys. I love it when you say to to, to him, uh, when you look at my car, is it like looking in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger and twins exactly. uh, right yeah, twins. here. Yeah, totally. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, that was last week's cars. Uh, let's get to the most interesting cars of the day today. Today's an interesting Monday. We have some, we have kind of a, I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of stoked about this lineup for uh, I don't know something that's yeah. we're doing a little different, but uh, yeah. let's start with the first car that we want to talk about today. Okay, so let's start on cars and bids, JP. We're going to look at a 2006 BMW M Roadster. I have to, I have to admit, um, I kind of forgot about this generation of car. And about a week or two ago, we, we looked at a coupe, and you declared very proudly it's one of your favorite cars. And I started looking at it, and it kind of like a dog tilting at a window windmill. And I was like, yeah. I forgot how much I like that car, and it's just sort of been passed over. It's really weird. There's all this love for E36s. And, of course, all the contemporary stuff with V8s. But these cars, you know, with their inline six and individual throttle bodies are making over 300 horsepower. And with a manual transmission driving the rear wheels, these are fantastic analog, normally aspirated, no nonsense. Like, why aren't these cars worth more money? So this one I picked out, one, because it's on Doug DeMiro's site. Uh, try to give him as much love as possible. The second is this car was ordered in the Polnick package. It <laughs> is triple black with a manual transmission and the aluminum trim. This is just awesome. And it's in Polnick spec because it's got 95,000. I don't want that car because it's got too many miles. Options. <laughs> this would be perfect for you. This yep. is the car everybody else would forget to ask to dance and you would rock like totally. Yeah. Um, I also love that it's on a California black plate. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going for this car. It's black sapphire metallic, which I owned an M5 in that color. I do love the color. It's great. Uh, the sport seats, manual transmission, uh, still under 100,000 miles, but probably mild out for most M enthusiasts that want their cars to be too perfect. Uh, I think this is a really cool car. Zero modifications. This car is no nonsense. Clean Carfax, 
no accidents, no stories, no nothing. Get yours for a deal. JP, on Doug DeMiro's site, it, I am sad to report this car only has nine bids, but I'm happy to report for somebody out there that this car is sitting at just 15250 bucks. That is a steal if it, it only creeps up from there. The car is in Mountain House, California, which I've never heard of. So I would say that is way, way, way south of here. Um, probably close to the Mexico border for all I know. Uh, mm. What do you think, JP? Mm. Is this a car you would rock or what? I think this is the best Porsche 996 ever. Um, yes. This car really is... Uh, a 996 beater. You can get this car for half the price of a .2 996. It has basically the same amount of power and is twice as reliable. No IMS, you know, uh, you know, nightmares to keep you up at night. No bore scoring. This engine, the S52 motor, or I'm sorry, the S54 in this car, right. uh, yep. just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. You can get, I mean, th- and and not obscenely expensive if something were to catastrophically go wrong, which it's right. just not likely to. Do. These cars are just little rocket ships. Um, yeah. They they feel like a mid engine car because the engine is so far back. It has that long nose, so it, you know it has that classic roadster look. But oh, yeah. uh, but it does not drive like a roadster. I mean, it's still you can hang that back end out and just. I mean, this is the easiest car in the world to drift, uh, but it's still forgiving. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Now, of course, a coupe would be cooler, uh, and I am a cab guy. I'm not a cabriophobe. I definitely uh, enjoy the drop top thing and i think uh like our friend paul from auto kennel mentioned uh the other week when he was a third nerd on our show he's like cabrios represent the best value in sports cars because he, like he mentioned about the 964 which is yeah. which have taken off you can get a cab version for a third you know two-thirds of the price yep. um yep. that's a huge savings uh and you know and these z4s unlike most cars were built as convertibles first and then hard tops right. so every, they do not every, lose anything by not having a roof yeah everything the z3 promised in performance the z4 delivered Mm -hmm. and uh and yet chris bangle was in charge and they had this what they call flamed edge styling uh which i kind of while we were trying to you know piece together a review of that uh coupe uh what i noticed trying to describe it to the audience is that there's a lot of creases and yet the car still gives a round profile which i think is pretty genius Uh, but he was and bmw people wanted to uh they wanted to torture him when he was in charge at the time. But I think these cars are going to age well, and at some point they're going to take off. So this is an unbelievable value. Variable valve timing, inline normally aspirated motor. It's 3.2 liters, the S54. It does 330 horsepower and 262 pound-foot of torque. And it's a six-speed manual with a short shift. Man, JP, th- this is a crazy value for the money. I mean, this is less than the worst 996 possibly offered in the market in the U.S. today, where it yeah. sits right now. And this will run circles around it in performance and reliability. Or hang with yeah. it in performance and run circles in reliability. So, what else? Every single time we talk about one of these, I go, hmm, maybe I need to just go get one. Uh, this well, I, is just so stupid. I mean, they're so I, great. I picked this one out for you, and then it's interesting because you wound up picking one out for me, knowing that I'm an Italian guy. Yeah. So, huh. all right. So, all right. So, where do you think this the, is going to land here? Yeah, with a little teaser to the car ahead, uh, JP. The question is whether this car is going to break um, twenty thousand dollars. And last yeah. night, I thought it would. And this morning, uh, everybody on Cars and Bids said, "Are you insane? It's on Cars and Bids." So yeah. I thought twenty one thousand, but it hasn't gotten a single bid this morning. Uh, well, it did. It's on nine bids instead of eight. But I yeah. still, I think it's going to struggle. I'm going to go eighteen thousand bucks. Um, so you know the value of this car, it, it does represent an unbelievably good value. Um, and like all sports cars that have been underrealized, uh, they're yeah. everything's creeping up a little bit. This car is starting to get a little bit of recognition. People are looking around and they're seeing things like nine nine sixes and other cars, just even S two thousands going. Just like, oh man, yeah. I can't afford the things that used to be cheap. So what else has the same horsepower and I can have fun? Well, people are starting to discover these because fifteen grand was the money was the price for this car a year ago. You could have gotten a ninety five thousand mile Z four M for under fifteen if you searched around. So so, yeah. um, which is just ridiculous. And, and the Z4, um, has always suffered just because of the time when it was released. And by the time the M came out, we've talked about this before it came out yeah. during the recession, the great recession. So, um, 
That said, yeah, I'm with you. Cars and bids does not do well for BMWs. I mean, we see it time and time and time again, over and over and over. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to say 17. I mean, it may not even get, if it gets another bid, I, I'll, I'll be surprised. If it does get any more bids, it's going to be in like the hundred, hundreds of dollars. So I'm going to say 17, yeah. bit the under. Did you hear that, Doug DeMiro? JP Polnick said BMWs don't good, do good on cars and bids. Why don't you come on here and tell him while he's wrong? It's true. So, I mean, it's the same thing go. that we say about Audis, right? The people that want yeah. these types oh, of man, cars so cannot afford them without financing. And if you can't afford I, a car without financing, it's very difficult to to realize an auction. J- JP, we've been doing this for five months. How much love have I given Audi? And and every time I yeah. bet high, and you go, Michael, you're crazy, and you always win. It's just yeah. it's it just never works out. Well, you always so, bring but, up the Audis on cars and bids. You very rarely bring them up on BAT, um, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. So I, I would you know maybe maybe when we're cruising, it's like all right, let's 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 take a look at one. I yeah. mean, platform versus platform, and that's exactly what we have next. That's specifically yeah. why we we you know the, the Z4M uh, manual or they're all manuals, but the Z4M yeah. convertible uh, Roadster is. A special car, but it's not super special, right? They, they're all over the place. Um, yeah. So the reason why we chose that is because rare, it's rare, but the same car uh, is closing on the other platform today right. as well. A lot of times you'll see yeah. it the same week, but not the same day. E- excellent uh, presentation, JP. We're doing a 2006 BMW Z4 M Roadster, this time out of Punta Gorda, Florida, mm. with just 37,000 miles. Now, certainly miles to miles, uh, we're not comparing apples exactly, but this car is on Bring a Trailer, and this car is sitting at $21,000 with four hours to go. Uh, so uh, the big difference here is that black car, JP, had some miles on it, but it's a mm-hmm. one-owner car. This red car has about half the miles uh, and is a four-owner car. But we see that this car is going to have way more action because right off the bat, JP, this car has 10 bids <laughs> instead of nine. <laughs> yeah. So it's really interesting. These are This is going to be a great juxtaposition just to see what is it. Are we going to only be able to denote a difference in miles or are we going to be able to denote a difference in platforms? And that will come down to see if there is a big – flurry of bmw enthusiasts that are trying to bid or steal this car at the end of the auction so we'll try to report that tomorrow how many more bids this car got than the other one Uh, but otherwise these are these cars are identical they're just a different color this one is in a very italian shade of red uh which i would take and jp would save money and get his favorite color in black by buying (laughs) the other car um without a doubt but uh all right, there you go. I mean, this will be interesting to see. JP, I know you don't like Florida cars. What, mm. Why is that? Is it because of the humidity or is it because everybody in Florida has lost their mind? You know, it's mostly because of what the environment does to the cars. Um, you know, the, the the especially something that's this old. You know, a ten year old, fifteen year old car. It's it's just going to soak up all of that. Uh, all of that moisture and all of the humidity and all the sticky nastiness, it causes the leather to stretch and buckle. And you get into a car that's been from, you know, that's from Florida, uh, you know it pretty quick. It's, you the, can tell the, immediately. The, lat, the, 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 pre, the, the current owner of this car bought the car in uh, 2014, but has kept the car in Wisconsin that entire time. Okay. Uh, so even, even as far back as March 2020, uh, this car did some DMV stuff in Wisconsin. So it, despite this car being in Florida, it hasn't lived yeah. in Florida. So this Well, really that, should... that bodes very well for the car because this yeah. is definitely not yeah. a car that anyone drove during the winter uh, in right. Wisconsin. So that means it was saved yeah. from the corrosion and all that stuff. So, you know, I mean, 37,000 miles. I love this color. I actually, uh, you know, this Amola, this Amola red, uh, you know, I, yeah. I do love black on black, but uh, I would have no problem rocking this car. Um, it's a much nicer red than like a Porsche of guards red or whatever um you know imola Imola is a town in italy where they hold a formula one race the san marino grand prix is at the famous formula one track of imola italy so that's imola sounds so much better it's like uh it's like uh normale it's just the normal (laughs) exactly um (laughs) they just make it fancy uh look you know both these cars suffer from terrible 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 photography this might be one of the worst photographed ads in the world uh with the guy's thumb over here we just clicked through a picture where he was taking a photo of something on the ground you could see his bare feet that alone would make me go 
<laughs> Look, dude, if I have to see your toes in an ad, I'm not buying yeah, your car. Freak I don't pass. care how good a deal it is. You're not getting my money. You are disgusting. Pass. Whoever the seller of this is, you are effing disgusting. You're oh, gross. Nobody God, wants to see so a man's great. foot. Uh, oh, that's so, so but, funny. you know, um, yeah, this car is definitely the better of the two with far fewer miles. Uh, where do you think this one's going to land, Michael D? So, JP, I wrote $27,000 down last night. I'm going to stick to my bid. I'm going to go there. I think that's what gets it home. 27 grand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not that strong on this car. Um, it is BAT, uh, so that's definitely going to help. But, I mean, these just aren't that strong. I, You know, for, for $27,000, I think most enthusiasts are going, oh, I'm getting myself a, a 996 or a high mileage 997 or something like that. Um, so, I, I think even with the relatively low miles compared to the other one, I think this car yeah. will struggle to make 25. Um, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, All right. Well, uh, I'll, and, I'll, and, and I think really it's going to, what's it at right now? 21. 21. On yeah. Ten, I think it's going to struggle to get to 25. Yeah. Maybe right. it makes well, 24. Yeah. I, I listen, your numbers might be right. This thing might go up in hundred dollar increments. Yeah. But I would think that this particular car in this particular color with this particular history and low miles, yeah. there's gotta be a flurry at the end. I think this auction is going to wind up with like, 22 or 24 bids mm. even if your number is correct i just mm. think there's going to yeah. be a, people that come out of the woodwork because of the platform for this car even if your number's right so yeah. we'll see well you know you know what we always say if it were a coupe it would just i mean it'd be a completely oh, yeah. different story but uh That's true. You, uh, this is a great great value i think you could find one of these for that money or less uh pretty easily but anyways yeah. uh good luck to the seller on that one uh except that you're a disgusting disgusting person i had to see your foot i hate you <laughs> Um, what are we, what's the next car? I think we should take a time out in the show and go throw up. I don't, all right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I barfed a little bit. Yeah. Let's yeah. go back in time for a little bit. Uh, we're Fuck going to go to Linwood, Washington, JP. Yeah. Is that up by you? Yeah, that's in Snohomish County. That is where yeah. I grew up. Wow. All right. all right. Which Linwood, car is Washington. that? That's the BMW 318iS with no reserve. Hmm. This is a 245,000 mile uh, no story car. This is just a car that's been driven and used and driven and used and driven some more. And here it sits in beautiful, brilliant red uh, with the 14 inch kind of classic uh, basket weaving uh, wheels. Uh, JP, were these wheels actually made by BBS or are they just sort of in the style of a BBS? No, I always thought they were BBS, but uh, I you think know. they are. I yeah. think they are. I, I, you know, it's funny that people would call them basket weaves and not actually say that they're BBS. If mm. I had one of these cars, the first thing I would look at to see if they were BBS is, you know, yeah. I mean, like that's something that would be important to me. But anyway, manual transmission. Uh, these are four cylinders, right? JP, 1.8 liter. Yep, one little fours. 182 yeah, or four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't make a lot of power, but man, it just these are just great driving cars. E30 platforms are fantastic. I actually like the contrast of the gray carpets. It's just in this car, they are so dirty and so used up, it's kind of a deal breaker. But those sports seats and that classic sort of BMW four headlight front end, I, I'm just such a fan of these cars from this era. Uh, it, they're just awesome. I've never even owned one, and I want one really bad. Uh, when when the garage expands, JP, there'll be an E30 something in yeah. in there. I just think they're too cool. Um, I might not reach for a four cylinder, uh, but I understand that these are fun to drive. I know you have some experience with them. Limited slip differential, five speed, uh, great balance. Dude, take it away. What, what, what's yeah. left in this car for the next owner? Is it is this something that he could keep driving? Yeah, I mean this thing will go forever. I mean, in I mean the engine is very rebuildable and all that stuff. This is a great for this is a great entry to car enthusiasm this is the car for that kid that's just starting out going all right i don't want to get a honda civic or i don't want to go get a new hyundai or something like that i want to get something that i can drive around and look kind of cool yeah it's pretty run down but hey if you're a teenager or young 20 nothing you're gonna be way cooler in this car than you you are in anything that you can buy brand new uh for you know the, the cost of this car will be less than the down payment on a new velocitor uh, and a hundred thousand million times cooler than anything you could get on the key a lot um so go get this car now you're gonna have to learn about cars driving this thing you know this is an old car and things are gonna break especially with this many miles but um you know it's also relatively safe it's got an airbag uh, the e30 yeah. platform is a relatively safe platform crumple zones and all that kind of who are not like the modern stuff as well but um the four cylinder has plenty of power and you can wind it up that's what's fun about these cars i actually yeah. prefer the 318 over a 325 and the e30 generally really yeah wow. i really 
really do. Okay. Yeah, the 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 six cylinder obviously has more power, but the three eighteen just feels more spirited in a way that requires you to you know pay attention and get after it. Um, let kind me, of like an old nine eleven. Boy, that bumper's put, seen better days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let me put you on the spot, JP. Uh, right. You know, if if the money's roughly the same, would you rather have a three eighteen IS three eighteen or or a GTI with an eight valve three eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Three. So you do like three eighteen. Three eighteen. Three eighteen. Okay. Cool. It's rear wheel drive, man. I mean, that's the thing. You know, five speed rear wheel drive. Uh, No GTI. I don't care what the GTI is. I'd rather have a three eighteen. I mean, now, granted, I'd rather have a nice GTI over this kind of busted three eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. uh, No. Yeah. We're not. All all other things being equal. Uh. Yeah. The three (laughs) eighteen in a heartbeat. Uh, I'm. You know, the last one. Rochelle used to drive one. I had. We had another one that uh, I wound up giving to Lauren and HD. Um. Who used to work for me and i yeah. believe he still has it it's uh, they call oh, it the oil that's slick. awesome um yeah he slammed that thing so hard slick. yeah because it was black on black and he kept busting the front oil pan because it was oh, so damn low man. he made it so low that's that so they call it oil slick. Um, but yeah this car i'm sure i've seen this car because i was i used to be pretty involved in the bmw scene up there in the um, that's pretty funny yeah cool so, car yeah yeah I love that color. Uh, if it were Italian, wouldn't it be like brillante or something like that? Exactly. Brilliant, yeah, right? yeah. Put six totally. more syllables in it, it'll be better. Uh, where's it going to land, though? I don't know. Values on these are a little all over the place, and this one's beat. Yeah, it is beat. And JP, it's got 15 bids sitting at $6,100. Mm. Uh, so there is, and there are people watching. There's some action on this car. Uh, I certainly don't know them as well as you, JP. Uh, it was only at $5,200 last night. And I put eighty five hundred dollars, but since it's got some action and some love this morning, of our five cars, this is the only one that got bids overnight. Hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna up it by a grand and say ninety five hundred dollars, uh, just because of the just the cosmetic condition on this car is so rough. Yeah. JP, I can't imagine somebody's gonna spend ten grand on it. So I'll leave yeah. my bid at ninety five hundred and send it to you. Taking your gut, eighty five hundred is the number. Um, that's okay. I mean, that's basically what it's worth if it gets more than that. Um, I mean, it's not even really worth that as bad as poor shape as it is. Uh, but we are seeing nice ones getting over 10, no problem if they're really, oh, nice. yeah. so, uh, yeah. this just has so many, I mean, this, to make this one nice, you're pulling the, you're pulling the string in the sweater. You are just, oh my God, everything yeah. needs attention, you know? So, yeah. You cannot fix just one thing on this car because the rest of the car is so rough. Yeah. So it's like, if yeah. you start. You are you are committing to this as a money pit, and that whatever you put into it, you're not going to get out of it. You're just yeah. going to put it in to enjoy it like that. So you pretty uh, much have to for, embrace it as it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, or yeah, and then just or just spend money on like the suspension and and then drive the hell out of it. Yeah. Shock everybody yeah. that your old BMW jalopy uh, yeah. can hang with them in the turns. <laughs> That'd be a fun car to hang with people. Uh, all right, good. So uh, three eighteen E thirty. Well, you know I love those little diving, not diving board head. Uh, Bumpers. I love those small bumpers. The E30 looks so yeah. much better with the small bumpers like that. It, um, it is such a good looking front end on that car. Yeah. I love it. Classic. All right. What's the next? All right. What's JP, the next? Cl- clearly a car that I am just pining for. So uh, <laughs> listen, <clears throat> Porsche should have hired you a long time ago. I've said that yeah. since I met you. Uh, we've been talking about this. We, you and I have had this dialogue for three and a half years now. Um, when they made this car, how do I say this? How do I introduce this to you? A, a lot of cars that have wide bodies, JP always says, you know what would be really cool is if they took the spoiler off that car and put a flat deck lid. And I didn't realize, but Porsche actually had an option for that. So I met on the Breakfast Club rally, I met a guy from the Bay Area that has a white M491 coupe. And the 491 coupe is a normally aspirated car with the turbo wide feathers. But the M470 is something you could add to the M491, which is to get a rear spoiler delete. So this gentleman that I met when Esther and I were driving Ruby on New Year's Day, he had a white 87 or 88, I know it's a G50, M491 coupe with black interior that is an M470 car. And he even has the California uh, vanity plate M470 because nobody, even me as a Porsche guy, and you as a guy who's been advocating for i didn't this. know that i did not there know is a, there's a 470 there is an option code m470 which is rear spoiler delete jp that photo you teed up says it all right there how cool wow. is that it's a speedster with a tall window right like yeah it's, yeah i mean that is freaking awesome and so this car is very similar to that guy's car um i would guess that his car because his car is truly jp it's pristine white with black sports seats fuchs and a beautiful big exhaust coming out of the back of it um 
I reckon his car is probably a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar car. I would think that this car could see a hundred thousand dollars despite having sixty one thousand original miles. There are paint meter readings in this ad and compression readings to show that this car is in spectacular original condition despite the miles. So offered out of Carlsbad, California, we're looking at a normally aspirated G50 transmission, M491 turbo look, M470 rear spoiler delete in mm. black of all things with a black dash, air conditioning, the whole shebang, uh, records and photos for days. JP, you may notice there are about 300 photos in this bucket, which I... I think is great. This guy tries to disclose everything in this ad, and I think he does a really good job of it. Uh, fantastic car and super, super rare. JP in in let's see, from eighty four to eighty nine, so five, six, six model years with three different models: the coupe, the cab, and the targa. They made a total of fifteen hundred turbo looks over those three platforms over six model years. Uh, so I would say that getting a G fifty. With a with an M470, I mean, you're talking this maybe like one of 100 cars. I, I'm guessing. I this is a really rare Porsche. This is a great car. Should bring 100 grand, I think. Yeah, I mean, and if you know, we always for a car to get that kind of money, it really, really helps when you have photos like these. Uh, oh. Clearly, a, a professional job. They went into a studio and did everything right. They cleaned the car. Uh, they're showing off everything. <laughs> so this four seventy thing is intriguing to me. I think that is something that uh, you know you learn something new. Uh, and being a Porsche guy, yeah, I'm amazed that I've never heard that before. That said, um, there's no way in hell I'm personally paying a premium for that unless I'm a collect. If I'm a collector which i'm not that makes sense yeah but not right. being a collector buy a 491 and 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 swap Could out the rear deck <laughs> yeah and yeah. save yourself a whole grip of money um so i i'm just i i'm intrigued and fascinated and look at that love, picture. yeah that's, woo look at that that's hot um yeah. i'm super Remember? excited that this exists but i don't see for that if it's going to bring up there in the 100 150 range you're now talking um, speedster money, and if yep. I'm going to do yep. a slope back, I'm going to get a real speedster. I'd rather have like a speedster with sixty thousand miles on it is going to be about oh, one hundred fifty yeah. grand. So yeah. I'm or less. Way in a, yeah, well, yeah, I'd, in a heartbeat, I would get one of those instead of uh, this car because this car we've seen we've seen four ninety one cars struggle. You know, four ninety one cabs struggle to get fifty or sixty. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, 80 grand where it's sitting now would be yeah. all the money. And it would, the only way it would get that, even with original paint, great photos, yeah. uh, is it have to have less miles. I mean, you know, yeah. the, the, the Porsche crowd is so finicky. Uh, yeah. Figuring them out is as is, is, is big a business plan as any of, anything else you could do if you're going to foray into the business. But these are great uh, photographs. I agree with you. Uh, and this is just a really uh, interesting car uh, for that reason. And, and JP, I, on New Year's Day, I took – uh, about a half dozen or a dozen photos of that guy's white um, mm. car uh, for you and just never got to send it to you. And I was like, look, JP, they have an option code. It's it's M470 and it says Polnick. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, yeah, man, the, yeah, I don't know, man. I, this car is just amazing, but uh, 60,000 miles, you got to look at this car with 60,000 miles on it. If it said 6,000 miles on it, you'd believe it. It really is that it, nice. It's it? super clean. Unbelievable. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Very cool. Now so, in this what, ad, how clear is it that it's that 470 package? I mean, it's like, if you're glancing on, through the, it's, I'm sure it's, it's all the over COA. the place. Yeah, I'm sure it's on the COA, but is it, I'm yeah. asking about the ad. Like it, what is the title of the ad? Is it four seven oh, yeah. option 470? Yeah, says 1988 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet M491 slash M470. Which okay. Because right. that's is strong. really what you're selling here, right? You're basically yeah. saying oh, yeah. it's got that. That's, that's the final premium. And then this this photograph of the uh, the hood sticker is all the money in the world because it says 470 right on there and then 490 and then 491. I'd actually like to know what option code 490 is. <laughs> yeah, we right. need our... Uh, we need Frank Collins on the show. But that Zenith photo you took of the car with the convertible top open, do you remember that poster where the guy's laying in the seat and the girl's laying across the lap? <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody wants one? Yeah, that reminds that me of that. Classic, That's a great, yeah. great photo. Was that a real ad or was that an ad from uh, Crazy People? No, it was no, it was a poster. It was like a, it was like a poster you'd buy at a, at a head shop. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, got not, it. Yeah, it wasn't, that was not uh, a an advertisement <laughs> well no but didn't that come from a movie didn't that come from uh crazy I people 
I, there was a I movie God, with um, there was an '80s movie about a guy uh, who like he was a he was a con man of some sort that got out of jail and he started a advertising agency selling ads to companies uh, with you know like he, he, they had this ad Volvo boxy <laughs> but good you know it, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> just embracing all the obvious things that nobody uh, would say out loud. Um, God, I'm pretty sure it was called crazy people. Oh, that's, uh, Daryl that's Hannah fantastic. and Dustin, oh, not Dustin it. Hoffman, but um, who's the guy that played? Uh, yeah, whatever. And it was, who cares? Definitely being old right now. Uh, yeah. I love this car. Where's James it going to land? Yeah. Uh, uh, JP, I think this car, I think this car is going to bring a hundred thousand dollars. It's got two hours okay. to go to Carlsbad, California. Great marketing. Bitter mojo sprinkled all over this car because even though you and I wouldn't pay the money for this car, we both want this car. Oh, no, for sure. Thing. Absolutely. This is the FU money Porsche that you would show up and be like, yeah, it's an M470. It's had no rear spoiler. It makes it special. It's like, come on. You know, give me a break. But uh, yeah, pretentious is all get out, but I still want one. $100,000, JP. I think it's going to make it. I, I just do. A boot full of pleated shorts and white socks. Here you go. That's Comes exactly. with it. Um, yeah. yeah, I... I suspect you're right, but I'm going to just bid the under and just say 95 and say it doesn't break 100. It right. doesn't have there a lot go. of bids, but BAT is where you get a late rally. So, I mean, For sure. this is one, it's probably going to be one of those cars where you're going it, to, it's supposed to end in an hour, like two hours. And this afternoon at like four o'clock, this auction's still going. People yeah. are still, it's yeah. one of those. I call you whatever. at four 30 yeah, and you're like, I'm what? Like, I'm like, uh, that they're still bidding on that nine eleven. Yeah. It's entirely I, I was so bummed. I missed out on that S 2000 that I talked myself out of my take that i'm just gonna <laughs> stick to my guns on this even if i go down with the ship 100 yeah. grand bitcoin was up i think some fool is gonna jump on this car and be yeah. like i can afford it so anyways all right uh what's the last car of the day jp i man i missed you this weekend i picked cars all over today that with you in mind uh <laughs> this this is an absolute polnik special uh what we're looking at is a 1994 volkswagen corrado jp read this out loud with me Two liter, sixteen valve, five speed, ninety four Corrado. Tell our audience why that's not possible. A two liter, sixteen valve. What yeah. happened to the VR six? Yeah. So uh, this car is a JDM car imported by the seller from Japan in twenty twenty for hmm. your enjoyment. Wow, a car that, that is, is interesting. pure, pure unobtainium because in nineteen ninety four the only Corrado that was available in the North American market was the vr6 uh the g they called it a g60 right or no slc slc yeah the g60 SLC. was the four-cylinder one yeah yeah yeah. okay so the slc uh so this car uh, available in the japanese market still employed the venerable rev happy and i think awesomely fun two liter 16 valve motor that made jp correct me if i'm wrong like 134 horsepower yeah like 135 and 135 uh so it's not big uh performance numbers but they're fun they made for fun cars in a lot of the mark ii volkswagens that you and i adore uh such as the gti and the jetta gli uh so here we see that motor employed in as late as 1994 uh this is a metallic dark gray metallic car offered at a norcos nor cross georgia with eighty thousand kilometers which is just fifty thousand miles uh it's got the confetti insert gray cloth interior uh and these really interesting 15 inch uh alloy wheels uh that rear spoiler is manual it goes up and down at speed uh and i've always liked this car i just think this is kind of like you know a modern day Scirocco, is it not jp what do you think uh, totally slick top too dang uh i forgot that these even existed i am like yeah. kind of set aback here 16 valve engine on this platform why the hell didn't they just do that volkswagen right? what the hell oh. i mean i will say that the uh, that the vr6 version of this car when it works um is such a good vehicle and if porsche ever made a front wheel drive car that would basically be it but i mean a 16 valve Corrado, uh, wow, 94, no, no airbag either. Uh, this is, yeah, wow. I'm, I, isn't that it's, awesome? It's, it's rare that I'm like shocked by a car and just like, oh my god, I really, really, really want this car. Um, oh, dude, looking this at one of these, so this is cool. unbelievable. I love the interior too. Yeah, man. yeah, put a, you could put a prototypo on this car, get some better Volkswagen sourced wheels for this, yeah, um, uh, that would look better on this car or go really crazy because I think it's the same bolt pattern as a Porsche. You could probably find some sort of mm. really simple boxer wheel, is not. Oh, no, it's a four, it's a four lug. Oh, never mind. Well, now some of them are four lugs, so the like the the. 
Uh, the VR sixes should be a, a five lug, and the earlier ones are a four lug, four by one hundred, right. and then so this should be so. a five by one twenty. I can't remember what it is. Yeah. It's anyway, not, I would not, find I, yeah. I would find a better looking wheel, and then just you know a couple of things, spice this car up with an exhaust, maybe an intake, uh, and have a blast. A slick top, dark gray metallic. This, these pictures are depressing. The car is it's it's just weird how this car doesn't pop on an overcast day in a parking lot in front of a gray gray warehouse. These photos could not have been worse for what is a complete unicorn and jp as such the bat community is either really being patient or not noticing this car with four hours to go this vehicle is sitting at just thirteen thousand two hundred and forty dollars on only nine bids and i would think this would be a twenty five thousand dollar volkswagen uh if it's on a u.s title which i believe it is yeah because it's there's a carfax report so it's titled in the u.s um it's titled in Georgia. So yeah, it, you can get this car to your state people. Like this is awesome. Where is this car? It's in Georgia right now. Georgia. Yeah. But man. 94 means on the 25 year, it's exempt in California. You can bring this car in. Like go get man, it. Man, man. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go get this car. I, I really want this thing. Um, I'm, this thing is awesome. I need to call, I need to call my buddy, Zach. Uh, his mom had the first Corrado in America and, uh, hers was a G60 in it or yeah. in it, blew up but anyways uh this car is what, I, I, were wow, the cheese were the cheese 60s turbo jp uh they were supercharged that's right super a little yeah. inline for a little not inline but a little four-cylinder uh supercharged thing that just couldn't handle it um yeah. but uh you know they were neat when they worked uh and when they were new they were nice cars but wow i'm just i'm just shocked by this car i want it uh where's it gonna land uh so jp i you know I'm betting the platform here. I think this car's got to bring 20,000 bucks. Uh, It's at 13,000, but there hasn't even been a bid since last night. I think the Volkswagen crowd is out there for this car. Uh, But I also thought that that seafoam green, there was it that jade green GLI. I thought that car was Mm going to bring 20, 25 grand. And remember it stalled out at 18. So I'm caught out here, but I'm going to stick to my guns. Uh, Again, I'm still feeling my, like the door was slammed on my nose on that, an S2000. So I think this is a $20,000 Volkswagen all day long. Uh, and if it goes for less than that, you better buy it, man. I'm telling you, this thing is awesome. Yeah. We are going to be paying attention to this one. Um, yeah. so your, your number is 20, 20 grand. I think so. Yeah. I think that's a long to. way to go from where it's at, but we do have a long way to go. It's got four hours left. So I'm going to bet the yep. over and say 22, um, good, good, and yeah. say it finds that rally. Uh, but I'm with you. This should be a $25,000 car. Um, I am really shocked by this thing, but yeah, it's BAT, uh, whatever the number is that it gets is what it's worth. I mean, that's the thing. That's the sorry thing about this car. So if we do, if, if somebody can buy this for under 20, it's buy it, sit on it, maybe wait till rad for sale comes out and maybe it does better over there, but I doubt it. Um, cause this is the platform where you, he, I, I think Volkswagen, Volkswagen's just like Audis and BMWs. Uh, um, uh-huh. The people that want them don't have any money. They have to finance stuff. And it's just yeah. this, this is a car that, but, but then again, we're talking about newer Volkswagen. So like a newer GTI or something like that. Yeah. This is a classic Volkswagen. This isn't like an old Volkswagen, an air cooled one. This is, this uh, is that era of guys, our age who have the money to buy stupid stuff like this. Right. This is the car that people like us should be looking for. And uh, oh yeah. my God, totally. Yeah. And then this car would go up in value JP. I think if you own this car, I think you would struggle to sell it. I it just yeah. emotionally, not yeah. like you wouldn't have fun <laughs> right. getting money for it. Yeah. 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 Emotionally, I, this car, JP, imagine like a machine lip, but like gold basket weave BBS wheels on this thing and a, Man, and a little yeah. exhaust system coming out of it. And then a couple of decals. This thing is just, it's beautiful. And it's just, you're, you're not seeing it in these photos. This car in Vegas with a beige desert and blue sky is going to look amazing. Yeah. So bring it home, baby. Oh, uh, want it. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I gave my number, you gave your number. Let's go That's over, uh, you yeah, have the ahead. numbers. Do you have the numbers of all the cars that we did today? I want to kind of do that, uh, from now yeah. on is at the very end of the sure. show, let's list all five cars and list all five, uh, all five of our bids real quick. Cool. So we started off the day juxtaposing exactly the same car on two different platforms. Uh, a couple of 2006 BMW Z4 M roadsters. Our first car had 94,000 miles out of California. I said 18, you bet under at 17. 
seventeen thousand dollars. Uh, the second car had just thirty seven thousand miles and was offered out of Florida. I went twenty seven, and again, you went underneath me at twenty five thousand uh, bucks. Then we jumped over and looked at the BMW three eighteen IS with about two hundred fifty thousand miles out of your old home county of Linwood, <laughs> Washington, with a five speed manual. This is a no reserve auction, people. This car is going to sell. I said ninety five hundred, and you took my previous bid and said under at eighty five hundred dollars so we'll see uh and then we jumped all over this uh 1988 porsche 911 cabriolet with the m491 and m470 spoiler delete packages this car has sixty thousand miles offered out of california and is in spectacular original condition for that reason i said this car will bring a hundred thousand dollars and then of course you came underneath me and said 95 sucker <laughs> and uh and then our last car of the day which jp is going to buy i predict because <laughs> <laughs> JP <clears throat> also smartly bet the over because whenever he bets the over, the bid always comes under, which means he'll be able to buy this car for less than my bid of $20,000. He'll win the car but lose the bid because uh, he said $22,000. So my guess is JP buys this car for $18,750 or something stupid like that, and it was all a ploy. So there you go. We shall see. Boy, I would love to have this in the garage. Um, all right, guys. Well, there it is. Uh, that's a, that's been a Monday edition of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer and all the other popular automotive <laughs> enthusiast auction sites that keep springing up like everybody's got one. We might have one here soon. Um, you know, I mean, geez, we have eight people that watch our show. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll buy some cars from us. Um Stick around, uh, to come back tomorrow uh, for a Tuesday edition. We do this every day of the week. we got Kelly Smith uh, joining us sometime this week. We've got uh, Brian from DWA is going to be joining us as well. Nice. Uh, so we've got a very busy Bid Nerds week ahead of us. Um, we hope you subscribe and like and hit the share button. Let everybody know that the show exists so that everyone else can join in the nerd out and join in the conversation. Let us know what cars you think are the most interesting cars of the day, uh, and maybe we'll review one of those. Uh, yes. Take a look in the comments comment section uh, actually in the about section uh, of this video we're going to put the links to the specific cars that we talked about there so you can kind of follow along uh, we do that every day as well so you can always look at the cars that we talked about in fact you can go look at old episodes and watch our episodes while we talk about what we think the cars will go for and look yep. you can click on the link and see if we are right or wrong right there on the spot um and just see how wrong we always always are but see how much better you are see what you think you know play <laughs> along man it's kind of fun you know all the third nerds that join us uh they the rest of the day they're hitting me up oh the car's about this about that i mean it's just addictive uh <laughs> so, so join in the fun guys bid nerds your daily nerd on the most interesting cars and cars bids bring a trailer see you tomorrow at around nine o'clock thanks guys thanks michael deep later get those nerds nerds